Hello everyone, this is Jimmy Coldest, and today we're going to be doing a little tutorial. It's going to be about how to create simple NPC dialogue. So let's go ahead and copy this puppet out. He's going to be our, our NPC. Gonna make him dark blue so we can tell the difference. And we're gonna make him so he doesn't collide with friends, which is what we're gonna label our player puppet. We're gonna set some quick uh, parameters here just for ease of use. They're not really important. They're just basic movement settings. We're also going to uh, L1 and square, we're gonna turn this auto look off and the motion sensor so the puppet doesn't wiggle around when we're talking. So, here's an easy way to create an interactive button. Just stamp out a microchip. I'm gonna call it interact naturally. Stamp out a little node, and we're gonna stamp out a tag. Gonna use precise move to move it forward just a bit, and grid snap. If you grab onto these little arrows, it's very easy to move things, you know, change the trajectory of these tags, and flip them around. And we're gonna name it, we're gonna name it use. So, this is to activate a trigger zone, which I'll be getting to later. And the button we want to operate, use, will be triangle. You can just get that by pressing L1 and square on the controller sensor and grabbing these little white ports and connecting them to whatever node or logic you want to activate. But that's all for our puppet. For now, we're gonna go ahead and take this NPC, open up his puppet logic, which you can do with L1. L1 and X scopes into the puppet, and then you can just do it again to open up his logic. All right, so let's set up his talk chip, as I like to call it. And in here, we're going to stamp out a trigger zone. We're going to label... And we're going to first ch choose the shape. Make it a cylinder. Make it so it only detects a friend. Which means when the player is within this cylinder, the trigger zone will be active. And we'll set it to label. And then we're going to copy it out and set it to tag this time, and use will be the tag it detects, which is the tag we put inside the interact chip. Then we're gonna take out a text displayer. And just make a little prompt Set it to in scene, set it to face camera. Stick it right here, or wherever you please, really. And when a friend is close by, this prompt will appear by just connecting the detected wire to the start text input. Next, we're gonna want a dialog text displayer. We're going to go in here real quick, and we're going to turn off the prompt to close, being circle. And we're going to activate this prompt, the circle, and the X prompt. Make the circle one, by, and the X one, talk. 
We're also going to fill in some text here, which will be... Uh, greeting... Greetings Stranger. This will be the NPC's greeting. I guess you could put quotes around it to make it seem, you know, stand out from the options. It's like he's speaking to you. And you can have these options below. How you organize them is your own business, you know, and you can also change the font and all those goodies, but we're mainly just talking about the meat and potatoes. So use, you're gonna detect, use, and connect that wire to the start text input of this text display. Next, we're gonna stamp out a little node and a microchip. We're gonna name this text Act2. Open it up. And inside, we're going to put a keyframe, which shuts this first prompt off, shuts the trigger zone off. Then we're going to take the trigger zones detected and connect it to the power of this use trigger zone, which will basically prevent you from triggering this over and over while you're talking, or seeing the prompt while you're talking. Then we just turn on the power node so that this keyframe is active whenever this chip is on. And we'll connect that to the power so it won't be shutting that off anymore. Then we'll go in here to uh, inputs and outputs and you'll see this little text active output. Just take that, grab that, stick it in the node. So when this text is active, that keyframe will also be active and shut off these little things here. Now the next thing we're going to want is a tag. This is going to be important. We're going to name this tag Player Telly. I prefer Tella myself. I know that's not how you spell teleporter, but I prefer Tella. Player Tella. Now this is very important, because this is going to be where our player stands when they talk to the NPC. So we're just going to turn this around here with grid snap, use precise move, move it forward. I'm going to go over to the player real quick, take out a teleporter, stamp it down, match target orientation. So basically it will match the orientation of the tag we were just messing around with. And we're going to set it to follow a tag named Player Teller, as we've already established. And we're going to set up a camera. Set it to cut. Scope in with L1 and X so we can, you know, reset the camera's position. Something over the shoulder like this is probably a good idea. At least over the player's shoulder. And we're gonna walk up. Oh, wait, wait. You have to turn something off real quick. Turn off the follow behavior, otherwise, the NPC will naturally follow the player, and vice versa. And now that we have this active, we can go ahead and test the teleporter's position. I would say we're a little too far away for a conversation. And our knees are buckling just a bit because we're too low. Let's pull it down just a bit. That's just perfect. Now we are going to move our text box position just a little bit. Just to make it a little cleaner. That's pretty much everything you're going to need in there. Now we're going to copy this out. Oh, an easy thing that you might want to do is copy these together. Just uh, select with X both of them and then press L1 and R2 to clone. You can see the options displayed below. But once they're cloned, we're going to take this prompt to talk and connect it here. Then we're going to set up and copy this node 
make it red and set up a little bye feature so when you say goodbye the NPC actually says goodbye also. Stamp out a timeline, set it to play once. You can label it if you want to or turn it red or whatever makes it easy for you to remember what this activates. And we'll put a little text display here. Fare the well, stranger. That's what he says to you when you, you know, are leaving. And you can put it anywhere you like. You could put it at the bottom. You could even make this a subtitle if you wanted to. Depends on how you want your presentation to work, but for now we're just going to do a simple text display. Now take out a switch because you want the camera to be active. By the way, a simple way to lengthen these or shorten them is to use the up and down arrows on the D-pad or to grab this with R2 and pull it back and forth if you just want to change the duration, how long these things are displayed or active. But you're going to want the camera and all the other stuff that we set up earlier to be active, so just connect it to this node. That way when this is on, this will also be on. And just connect this to the power of the timeline. Set to play once, that's good. And take the circle prompt and connect it to bottom. Same here. And we're going to make a few extra options for dialogue. We're going to add one called Directions, just as an example. And we're going to change talk to a question. Who are you? And again, the presentation is largely up to you. Technically, directions might also have a question mark in it. It depends on how far you want to go. Also, we're going to want to change the NPC's basic dialogue to something like... Uh, what troubles you or something, or what's on your mind. We'll go with uh, what troubles you. Now the reason why we copied these two things out earlier is because it's much easier to have this port active because if you delete it that port becomes closed. We can just connect it right there and then delete it you see it's way easier. Although I may leave this out just for a second because I intend to copy this more. But now that that's done we're gonna copy out two more of these connect them like so and grab both of them, open their tweak menu and we're gonna shut off these prompts except for the X prompt which we're going to rename to next and basically these are just going to loop back around the previous conversation take next stick it in text active and we're all ready for our multiple options we'll go with who are you and directions so for who are you we'll have him say just a traveler you could probably have something more extensive, I'm just going for the quick and the easy answer. It'd be really obtuse at a real game to ask someone a question and get such a basic answer, probably. Seem like a waste of time even picking that dialogue option. And for directions, we'll say... Go north from... The big tree, and you will reach the cave. 
That's the directions he's giving us in this uh, theoretical game we're making. Alright, now I think we're all set. Let's go ahead and give him a little talking to. Oh, another thing you might want to do is you'll notice the puppet did like a little skip. That's because his controls are still active. And you can just turn off the puppet's ability to move and control by just uh, setting controller sensor input to, well, disable, I should say. Set the disabler on, and that will disable your ability to control things when the camera is active. And now he won't do that little skipping. Fairly well, stranger. All right. Greeting, stranger. Talk to him. What troubles you? Directions. Go north from the big tree and you'll... You will reach the cave. Who are you? Just a traveler. Next. And that's branching dialogue for you. It's all very simple. You could also have these dialogues potentially end abruptly if you wanted to. Like if you just wanted to press next and then the conversation ends, that's totally doable. All you gotta do is not loop the conversation. But, uh... Yeah, that's a simple way to create branching NPC dialogue. There are, of course, more sophisticated ways of going about this and more options and lots of little things like uh, what I used in Sammy Seal. But this is the simplest and quickest way. Hopefully you find this helpful if you're making a game in Dreams right off the bat. So, yeah, that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you wish to support our earnest insanity, you can check the links in the description to donate or buy merch. Until next time, goodbye.